Shalom, shalom, everybody. It's your brother Yakub. Back again to talk to y'all. Shabbat shalom, shabbat shalom. We we going to talk about envy not the glory of a sinner. A lot of times we see people doing good. You might be tempted to be a little jealous, be a little envious, or even just to wish you was even with them. Like, man, why didn't take me with them on that, on that trip? Why didn't take me with them on that ride? These scriptures right here going to let you know you're in the right place. So sit back. Let's get into it. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 41, verse 8. Woe be unto you, ungodly men which have forsaken the law of the Most High Elohim. For if ye increase, it shall be to your destruction. Excuse me for one second. Got to turn the volume down. <clears throat> Common English Bible. How terrible it will be for you who are ungodly, who have abandoned the law of the Most High. If you multiply, it is only to be destroyed. Ever heard that phrase, they build you up to let you down? Or build you up to put you down or whatever, how it goes. Sound like that. If you multiply, it is only to be destroyed. This is Proverbs <clears throat> chapter 10 verse 2. Treasures of wickedness profit nothing, but righteousness delivereth from death. Contemporary English version. What you gain by doing evil won't help you at all. Obeying the Most High is the only way to be saved from death. Proverbs 11 and 4. Riches profit not in the day of wrath, but righteousness delivereth from death. Amplified Bible. Riches will not provide security in the day of wrath and judgment, but righteousness rescues from death. Contemporary English Version. When Elohim, the Most High, is angry, money won't help you. Obeying Elohim is the only way to be saved from death. Ezekiel chapter 7 verse 19. They shall cast their silver in the streets, and their gold shall be removed. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to deliver them in the day of the wrath of Yah. If we look at all these things going on around us now, that day might be closer than we think. So it's time to get right. They shall not satisfy their souls, neither fill their, their bowels, because it is the stumbling block of their iniquity. New Living Translation. They will throw their money in the streets, tossing it out like worthless trash. Their silver and gold won't save them in the day of Yah's anger. It will neither satisfy nor feed them, for their greed can only trip them up. Amplified Bible. They will fling their silver into the streets, and their gold will be discarded. Like something unclean. Like, Ew, get that away from me. Their silver and their gold shall not be able to save them in the day of the wrath of Yah. These things cannot satisfy their soul, nor fill their stomachs, for they have become their stumbling block and the source of sin. But it say the love of money, not money, but the love of money is the root of all evil. So that stuff, their possessions and stuff was the source of their sin. Either they were sinning in order to get it or sinning in order to keep it. So... Turn to the Most High, man. Let Him be your source. Let Him be your motivation. This is Isaiah 2 and 20. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they made, each one for himself, to worship. They, whatever they got that they think people worshiping. <clears throat> be jewel, could be jewelry, could be statues. Some people do have statues and stuff that they worship. Some people make shrines to other people and just have a whole bunch of pictures on the world of somebody. None of that stuff ain't going to get you nowhere. Let's start that one again. In that day, a man shall cast his idols of silver and his idols of gold, which they had made each one for himself to worship, to the moles and to the bats. 
to toss that stuff out for the animals to get it. Amplify Bible. In that day, men will throw away to the moles and to the bats their idols of silver and their idols of gold. I just see it as being like big pieces of jewelry. You know, people be having them all sculpted and stuff. Shoot, I used to have it all sculpted and stuff. All different. I had my name all in diamonds and stuff. I had a big old cross I used to wear before I found out more deep into that. Like, what sense did that make? If you're one of your loved ones got killed by gunfire, would you wear a gun around your neck? So the people that claim to love the Messiah, you know, like, why would you have a cross around your neck to show that? When Monique say make it make sense, I can't make no sense out of it. Let me continue on, though. The idols of gold, which they made to for themselves as objects to worship. Tell about how several, oh, <clears throat> man, I remember I had a necklace, that same cross. And this before I came into, like, the knowledge the Hebrew knowledge of, of who I am according to the Bible in Deuteronomy 28 and 68. Those verses that let us know who we are, the people of the book. But before I came to that knowledge and I was still going to church, I remember I had this necklace and it was this pastor. And he was just like, got on the microphone and was like, Woody, this is God. Give pastor such and such that necklace. And I told him straight up, like, yo, I don't play like that. <laughs> And it was just like so many churches that I used to go to when I left the secular music world to start trying to live for the most high. And this is before I even came into full knowledge. I was still trying to make my gospel records and stuff like that. But I was taking a step in the right direction. Wasn't well, quite there yet. And we still learn and growing every day. So I can't say I'm at my final form even just yet. But I was taking a step from where I was to the next step, to the best of my ability. And I remember so many different pastors who I thought would have been supportive was like, oh, you left too early. You supposed to get some of that more money. You could have bought some of that to us. You could have bought some of that to the church. But scriptures, and at the time I did feel a little, you know, like, man, maybe y'all might be right. But the more, but it was something inside, like that gospel song, I love something inside so strong. An old oldie. Back when the gospel songs used to be straight out the book. But anyway, I started studying and then I saw this. Sirach Ecclesiasticus, chapter 34, 18 through 20, verses 18 through 20. He that sacrifices of a thing wrongfully gotten, his offering is ridiculous. So, you know, there's so many people that do dirt and then bring their money to the church and feel like they being in good standing with the most high. Now, you might be in good standing with that pastor and whoever taking that money and whoever benefiting from it. You're in good standing with them. And let me tell you this, too. You're only in good standing with them until you don't have it no more. Because I've had churches where I've given very sizable donations to. And when the time came that I couldn't do that anymore, I ain't getting no pre more preferential treatment. This one pastor told me, and it was crazy because, like, when I first started going to this church, I was doing okay, but then it came a time where as though I wasn't doing so great, and <clears throat> I asked him to let me hold something, and his words to me was, we can put you on our broadcast, we come on, they came on TV here in town, and I think they might have been on one of those word networks, or one of those other networks where they come in on TV other places, he said, the best I could do is put you at the top of our broadcast, and let people know you're available to sing for weddings and funerals and, and gatherings and stuff like that. I'm like, hold up, when I gave you what I gave you, I ain't act like that. But I just didn't say nothing. My my mom taught me, like, to have reverence for pastors and stuff like that. You know, so I was very respectful, so I just stopped going. Later on, he sent for me through one of uh, a mutual friend of ours. He sent for me. And he invited me out to eat or whatever. So we sitting now eating. And I still was like with that reverence that my mom told me to have for pastors or whatever. He told me, he was like, man, why haven't you been coming? Instead of me being straightforward, I called myself speaking in parables. I was just like, man, I'm tired of me giving to different churches and organizations. Because by this time, it's like the third time that this had happened to me. Like I'm giving to these organizations. And when I hit a rough pitch and I need a little help, 
they always give me the runaround or they always treat me much differently than the way that I treated them. And his words to me was, well, that's easy. You just been sewing on bad soil. You ain't been sewing on the right soil. I'm like, I'm talking about you. Kind of like when King David, when um, Nathan the prophet came to King David and told him what he did. And he didn't realize he was talking about him. And King David was saying all of what should have been done to that man. And he's like, is you okay? And in my mind, I'm like, is you? I ain't call him a king. I called him something else. But in my head, I kept it to myself. But yeah, that was that was a very awakening thing for me. But give me one second real quick. I wear contacts and I got put something on my eye because with that man um Ben Stein used to say dry eyes one second pause for the cause yep let me start back with that verse again Sirach Ecclesiasticus chapter 34 verses 18 through 20 he that sacrifices of a thing wrongfully gotten his offering is ridiculous and the gifts of unjust men are not accepted the most high is not pleased with the offerings of the wicked neither is he pacified for the for sin by the multitude of sacrifices so no matter how many times you give and how much you give you're not pleasing the most high like you might please those people and like i said those people will switch up on you like the wind once you're not able to do what you was doing so best thing to do is just get right with it say obedience is better than sacrifice we talked about that before he who keepeth the law Bring us offerings enough that is your offering. You doing right. You doing right by the most high, keeping these commandments. That's what's most important. This is verse 20. Whoso bringeth an offering of the goods of the poor, doeth as one that killeth his son before his father's eyes. And then verse 22. Let's get that one too. He that taketh away his neighbor's living, slayeth him. And he that defraudeth the laborer of his hire is a bloodshedder. So let's go to the good news translation so we can make sure that's plain and clear. Verse 18. If you offer as a sacrifice an animal that you have obtained dishonestly, it is defective and unacceptable. The Most High gets no pleasure from sacrifices made by ungodly people. No pleasure. It don't say a little bit. don't say a teeny bit. It said he gets no pleasure from sacrifices offered by ungodly people. <clears throat> no amount of sacrifices can make up for their sins. And let me be clear. I'm not saying that singing secular music, not condemning people singing secular music. I'm saying if the Most High gave you a direct order and you're going against that direct order for you personally, then that's wrong. That's what I'm saying. Just to be clear. Because I don't want nobody coming. So are you saying that this person, this person is evil or this person is evil? At the end of the day, each person is going to have to answer for their own convictions. It would say, let every man work out his own salvation with fear and trembling. So I'm speaking about me and what was told to me. So just to be clear. This is verse <clears throat> 20. Anyone who steals an animal from the poor to offer as a sacrifice... It's like one who kills a boy before his father's eyes. Food means life itself to poor people, and taking it away from them is murder. It is murder to deprive someone of his living or cheat an employee of his wages. So anybody who might be listening, if you employ people and you cheating them of their wages, in the most high's eyes, you're just as bad as a murderer. This is Proverbs 14, 12. And also 16 and 25, like I always say when I bring this one out, it's so nice King Solomon had to say it twice. There is a way which seemeth right unto a man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Good news translation. What you think is the right road may lead to death. Come on, motorcycles. Y'all weren't doing that before I start reading. Sirach, Ecclesiasticus, chapter 9, verse 11. And this is the title of the whole thing today. Envy not the glory of a sinner, for thou knowest not what shall be his end. Good news translation. Don't be jealous of a sinner's success. You don't know what kind of disaster is in store for him. And let's go to finish it off 
I'm going to call this a bonus. Finish it off with this. Psalms 37, 1 through 4. Fret not thyself because of evildoers. Neither be thou envious against the workers of iniquity. But they shall soon be cut down like the grass and wither as the green herb. Trust in Yah and do good. So shalt thou dwell in the land. And verily thou shalt be fed. Delight thyself in Yah. And he shall give you the desires of thine heart. So let's go and get that out of the New Living Translation. And that'll be it for this week. Short and to the point. Psalm 37, New Living Translation. Sorry about that. It's coming, y'all. Here we go. Psalm 37, the Psalm of David. Don't worry about the wicked or envy those who do wrong. For like grass, they soon fade away. Like spring flowers, they soon wither. Trust in God and do good. Then you will live safely in the land and prosper. Take delight in Yah, the Most High, and He will give you your heart's desires. But you got to take delight in Him first. That's how that works. Most high willing, we'll meet again soon. May the most high bless you and keep you all throughout this week. Let y'all have a blessed week. All of us, y'all and me, especially in these crazy times we living in right now, man. And before we go, I also wanted to shout out buddy of mine, Her Growth Project, for this shirt. Very true words right here. My mental health matters. And so does yours, so stay up on that. And shout out to the good people at Yabaruk. On the hat, and like I said, most high willing, we'll meet again soon. Shalom, shalom. Love each and every one of y'all, and I'm out.